Hi, and welcome to this lesson on Le Chatelier's principle in gas equilibria. In our last lesson, we had a look at some definitions. So we explored reversible reactions, what closed systems are, dynamic equilibrium, heterogeneous and homogeneous equilibria as well. And we learnt that Kp is the equilibrium constant for gas. We learned how to calculate it and calculate its units. In this lesson, we're going to look at how Le Chatelier's plays in with this. We're going to look at the effect of, of course, changing the environment of these closed systems. So you recall from your previous year in chemistry that the Chatelier's principle states that any change to a system in equilibrium will cause the system to favour the reaction that opposes the change. The system wants to minimise the change. Therefore, for example, increasing pressure, the equilibrium will shift in favour of the direction that has the fewer gas moles. Pressure relates to gas, remember. So the side with the fewer gas moles. Conversely, if we decrease the pressure, then the equilibrium is going to shift to favour the direction that has the most, or yeah, the most gas moles. Here's an example of the harbour process. Everything is in gaseous state. And if we increased the pressure on this system, then it's going to shift to the forward reaction because to oppose the change, following an increase of pressure, it's going to want to oppose that and reduce the pressure. So it's going to favour the forward direction, which has a product with the least gas moles. You can see we've got four gaseous moles in total on the left hand side, one here and three here, and we've only got two on the right hand side. So it's going to shift in the forward direction to oppose the change. And overall, that will decrease the pressure of the system. If we're thinking in terms of temperature, if we increase the temperature, the system's going to get quite hot. The equilibrium is going to shift in the endothermic direction. And I like to think about it as it's trying to cool itself down and oppose that change. Conversely, if we decrease the temperature, it's going to want to shift in favour of the exothermic direction. Here's a question to have a go at. Pause the video and give it a go yourself or wait for my work through. So they're reducing the total pressure. So first of all, I'm going to just check. It's to do with pressure, so I'm going to look at the gaseous moles. And I can see that I've got overall two gaseous moles on the left-hand side and I've got four gaseous moles on the right-hand side. You can see I've got one here, one here, so that's two, and I've got one and then three here. So that's four in total. We're reducing the pressure, therefore we're going to shift in favour of the direction that has the more gaseous moles. So we're going to shift in the forward direction here to oppose that change. Therefore, I can immediately tell that the yield of hydrogen, this here, is going to increase. I'm going to make more of it. So the yield of hydrogen will increase. And then it says explain. So I need to continue there. So that'd be one mark. And then I'll say to oppose the reduction in pressure and cause the pressure to increase back to the equilibrium. So that's why we're doing it. The equilibrium will move to the side with the most moles of gas, or most gaseous moles. This is the forward reaction. Now, check your specification and your past papers for your particular exam board really carefully here, because there can be some very, very specific phrasing that certain exam boards ask for. For example, OCR does not like favoured. They've asked for that to be taken out. Um, in more recent papers, you'll notice it doesn't appear on the mark scheme as often. So do check different exam boards like these sort of questions phrased and used with the key terms slightly differently.